Hey everybody, Brian Goulet here with one and only Drew Brown, our customer care manager, and he is my right hand man when it comes to nib stuff. At Hi, Brian. Goulet Pen Company. Hi, Drew. It's good to have you in here. Thanks. Drew was a great help in our Lamy 2000 video that we did not too long ago, and he's back to help again talking about stub nibs. So we already did a video on uh, Fountain Pen 101 nib sizes and grinds, which you can see right here. Click on that if you haven't already watched it. I highly recommend you check it out, as long as all the Fountain Pen 101s, really. I mean, like, it's a good foundation for all of them. But we're gonna go a little bit deeper, specifically talking about stubs, italics, and whatnot. So Drew, can you start off by telling us what is a stub nib? Wow, I absolutely can. Okay. Well, Brian, a stub nib is a flat nib as opposed to a tipped, more round nib that you'll see on regular pens. Yes. And when you pull down on your stroke, you're gonna get a big old fat line. Yeah. When you go to the side, you're getting a really, really thin line. So you get that line variation. It's yeah. kind of like a ribbon effect once you write it on the paper. It looks really, really pretty. A little bit different than a flex nib. Mm -hmm. It doesn't require any additional pressure to get that line variation. Right. The, the line variation comes in the shape of the nib, not in conjunction with anything. You're Absolutely. Doing so you're just writer. writing with it like a normal pen, except it looks kind of like calligraphy. So it's kind of like the lazy man's calligraphy or a lazy woman's calligraphy. Absolutely. I don't discriminate. You could be lazy. You either don't gender. have to be lazy if you don't want to, <laughs> but it makes it easy and very accessible. It's very cool. We're going to yes. talk about it. All right. So there are different stubs to talk about. There's actually a lot of different lingo that's kind of thrown around with this. There's stubs, there's cursive italic, crisp italic, obliques. What do all these things mean? So I'm going to start out with crisp italic. This is actually the sharpest and crispest, if that's a word, type of nib that you can have ground in this fashion. It has very, very sharp, literally like squared off edges. And the advantage of this is it gives you very crisp lines between the cross and the downstroke when you're writing. The disadvantage is that it feels terrible. It's like you're scratching paper. You can literally cut paper with it. So for that reason, they're not very popular unless you get them custom ground. No, there's not many of them either. No, really aren't. So then if you kind of think about it, okay, you're taking this very kind of squared off edges and you round it over a little bit so that when you're writing, it's a little bit smoother. That's called a cursive italic. And the line between where crisp and cursive is, I don't really know, it's all very subjective, but think about it, rounding it off a little bit so it's a little bit smoother, but you're still getting some crispness, that's a cursive italic. If you round the edges a little bit more, it's kind of like stub, stub nib. Think about like the Dr. Mario pill. Like that's always kind of envisioned. Oh yeah. You know, like a stub, you know, kind of. Oh God, that's in my head now. I know, exactly. Drew's a big video game fan, so I <laughs> want to throw that in there. But it's very, very rounded. So it's going to be a very smooth writing experience, but you're going to sacrifice a little bit of the crispness of the line variation. And then the last thing you've got is an oblique, which is essentially a stub nib that's ground at an angle. So you can either have it ground to the left or the right. And really all that is, is a grind that helps to compensate for an extreme pen angle, like especially if you're left-handed and you want to have kind of a stub uh, look to your writing, but they're not very common anymore. That was like back when fountain pens were way more popular. A lot of vintage pens had obliques because it was really kind of a specialized thing. You don't really see them much anymore, but people still ask about them, so that's what they are. Angles are very important, as we're going to discuss. Yes. Most stub nibs you'll find are going to be stainless steel and they're not going to be tipped. You know, most of your fine mediums, broads are on, are gonna have a uh, iridium alloy or some other really hard type of metal welded right onto the front of it. With the uh, stubs, italics, all the ones we just mentioned, they're generally not gonna have any tipping material. It's just gonna be flat stainless steel, but stainless steel is pretty resilient. It's gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. So by avoiding the tipping material, you can give that, that you can give the nib a lot of surface area so you can get that good, nice ribbon effect with your line variation. Yeah, and it's not as concentrated the wear on it as it would be with like a fine or an extra fine oh, nib. No. It's, it's a lot more spread out, so it's not more stuff. Wear. You I betcha. mean, in the years we've been doing this, we haven't seen any like really worn out stainless steel stub nibs, at least no. in seven years or so. No, I've written nibs. with mine like crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what you're gonna see the most, and honestly, those are some of our favorite ones. Yeah. Uh, but then you've got the gold ones, and they do exist. Yes, the gold nibs, so the gold the gold stubs are kind of funny, Yeah. you know, because everybody wants them. They are really amazing when they work well. Oh, yeah. And th this is talking about pretty much all brands here. And we don't have a, we don't have a ton of experience. We'll go ahead and say we're not like nib experts no. here. And when we get to the gold stub nibs, not a lot of companies even offer them, not nearly as extensively as they do the regular, you know, fine and extra fines and stuff like that. I think because they are really, really tricky to get oh, right. Oh yeah, they're hard to make. Yeah, pretty much. And it's gold, it's, hard, it's a harder <laughs> material to work with. Yeah, period. And, and I'll be honest and say that we don't know exactly why. We suspect it as something to do with the softness of the metal oh, yeah. and perhaps it's not as forgiving. It feels really smooth, but what we see is more of an issue with baby's bottom, which oh, yeah. 
I feel like we should explain what baby's bottom is maybe yeah. at this point. Um, so baby's bottom essentially is when you have uh, too much smoothing that's happened in the nib honing process mm -hmm. that creates kind of this indentation in between the two tines of the nib. Looks like a butt. Basically, yeah. Baby's butt's not yeah. as maybe elegant sounding. Uh, but people say it. You've probably heard. <laughs> but baby's bottom. So what happens is you get such an indentation there that it breaks the flow of the ink. Yeah, there's like so, a little gap where the ink can't... The yeah. ink's trying to go between the tines, right? And if there's a gap there, it stops before it gets to the paper. So there's this little area where the paper and the ink are just not meeting. Which makes it feel amazingly smooth, oh, sure. but especially when you're starting or when you're writing maybe on an upstroke or a place where you're not providing as much pressure, right. it's gonna have some you know flow breakage and it's gonna be really kind of frustrating. If you're writing with it and it's only writing when you put down pressure, mm. that's usually a sign of baby's bottom. All right, so the key word here is intentionality. When you're writing with stubs, italics, whatever, you need to keep that nib flat on the paper. There's really not a lot of room for error for turning and shifting your hand like there is for your normal nibs, extra fine, fine, medium, broad. Mm -hmm. Because of the way they're shaped, you're going to get a little bit more leeway with those regular nibs. Yes. With a stub, you start moving that thing from the left or the right, your flow is going to die. You need to make sure it stays straight. Think about it like a golf club, okay? And, uh, you know, Drew and I are both golf experts All the golfers here for sure. We do many of swinging. the golfings. So if you think about a golf club, when you hold the club, if you turn the club in Touchdown. your hand, you can do the exact same swing, but you can hook it or slice it. I know those terms. You can hook it or slice it depending on the rotation of the club in your hand. Slice it to it's, the right. Yeah. Slice the, right. That's there you go. Word, yeah. Nice. Nice. So you're learning things <laughs> beyond just the But it doesn't theory. take a lot. You can just barely move it and you can get a completely different hit. It that's doesn't take a lot. True. And that's the story with these stubs that's, as well. That's the same kind of thing. Yeah. And for that reason, because you've got kind of a flatter area to work with, any misalignment that's going on oh, yeah. is going to feel really extreme. And you can look at it and you're like, oh no, this, this nib looks right. I've looked at them under loops before. I'm like, oh no, this thing's fine. And I put it down to paper. Urgh, it's still scratchy. Take a look at it again. I'm like, really? That much? And then I align it and there's a world of difference. It's crazy. Yeah. So now let's talk about specific brands because we have a lot of different stubs and italics available here at Goulet. This isn't going to be an exhaustive list and we're not like the foremost experts on it. This is just our observations from having played with them a lot and gotten a lot of good feedback from our customers. Played a lot. So we're going to go through all the most popular ones and give you an idea of what to expect. So let's start out with Aurora. Aurora is one of the most interesting ones because I think they have the truest italic nib of any of the pens that I've seen coming from a nib manufacturer. It's gonna feel kind of scratchy. It's gonna be less forgiving than pretty much all of the other stubs. And it's gonna, you're gonna have to write a lot slower with this one. Yeah, absolutely. And then we got Lamy. Lamy, you've got your 1.1s, 1.5s, 1.9s. The 1.1s are probably the most easy italics or stubs to write with. There's a great starter pen if you ever wanna try it. Um, they're more cursive italics, they're definitely a lot more rounded off than the Auroras, but not quite as stubby as some of the other ones we'll get into. Um, you will see a little bit more of a drag on them because they're kind of in that in-between zone. Next is Conklin and Monteverde. These are both made by the same manufacturer, so we'll go ahead and lump them together. They have a pretty open flow. They're not quite as forgiving when it comes to pressure. Probably on a medium drag, not the smoothest, but all around pretty good, and they only come available in a 1.1. Next up, we have Yovo. These are German-made nibs. You're going to find these on the Goulet nibs that we sell, as well as Edison and Twisby. They're the most stubby of the stubs, so you're going to get a pretty smooth writing experience with these with a hint of feedback. Of the ones we've played with, honestly, these are some of the best stubs we have ever had the pleasure of writing with, and I definitely would recommend these if you want to start off with uh, you know, a stub or italic adventure. Pilot Vanishing Points and Custom 912 are both ground very similarly, so I'm going to lump them together here. These are very stubby, very smooth. However, in order to get a lot of line variation, you need to hold them at kind of a high angle. So it's really kind of interesting. If you hold them at a low angle, it's going to write more like a double broad. Next up, we have the Visconti Dream Touch nibs. These are going to be made of palladium. They are tipped, and they're nice and stubby. They're going to provide a really wet flow and give you a nice springiness. Now, because of that springiness, they are a little more susceptible to baby's bottom, as we mentioned, but they're gonna be super wet and usually the flow is really nice. So I can't really talk about stubs without at least touching on music nibs. Now, there's several different music nibs made from different manufacturers and they're all kind of different. They're just, they're special. And the reason is they're special is because they're really stub nibs with three tines. So usually they're gonna be a 1.5 or broader 
nib, it's gonna be really rounded, like a super rounded stub, and you gotta write with them at a high angle to get variation. I go into more detail about that in my Q&A slice here about music nibs. All right, next up we have kind of an odd bird. It's the Pilot Parallel, which are super fun pens to write with. I definitely recommend them. Also, if you wanna practice writing with a stub, this is a great option because it will let you know when you're over rotating because you'll get this like Wolverine claw effect on your paper. Additionally, it's important to note that rather than your traditional, you know, nib and tine format that gets the ink to the paper, what you're working with are actually two plates that the ink travels between, two parallel plates, in fact, that get the ink to its destination. So, wrapping things up, the important thing to take away is that with italic stubs, parallels, what have you, you're going to need to spend some time paying attention to how you're writing and being intentional with how you're putting the nib to paper and being willing to change it around a little bit. Some of these pens are just going to want you to write a slightly different way. You need to be cool with that. And if you're not, then stick with your regular offerings. No big deal. But if you're willing to move your hand to where the pen wants you to be, you're really going to enjoy most of these pens. And I would definitely recommend it. They're a lot of fun. They really are. And Drew, I just want to thank you for helping out with this video. This is really Drew's kind of brainchild. He says, Brian, we're getting so many questions about stubs. We are. We really need to shoot this video. We so should. I really want to thank him. So Welcome. I would love to get your feedback on it too. So if you can leave us comments on YouTube or on the blog, we would love to hear how you think we did. Any other questions that you have Unless to it was follow bad. up? Well, no, that's okay too. Sometimes you learn most from your mistakes, Drew, Speak than you do yourself. from other. <laughs> well, I just don't make that many, so I don't have that many opportunities uh, to do that. All right. Anyway, but uh, thanks so much. If you like this video and you want more like it, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks so much for watching and right on.